Hey everybody, welcome to our channel, Kono Pro. In this video, we're gonna be making this really cool bar. It's a custom bar. So if you need a bar and you wanna build a bar, then you might wanna watch this video. We're gonna be going over the materials we used, the different techniques we used to build the bar, and hopefully we can explain it in a way that it's clear enough for you to have a good understanding on how to build a bar. All right, so please stay tuned, watch the video, and enjoy. All right, first off, what we do is we take standard two by four that are basically left over from one of our builds from one of our framing projects, and we cut them down to the height that we want, and then we run them through a table planer. Okay, so a standard bar can be anywhere from 42 inches to 44 inches, depending on how tall you are, really. But um, once you figure out the height of your bar, you can go ahead and Cut your size and remember to make sure that you figure out the height of your bar and then you minus that of your casters. And once you do that, that way you have your overall height is right for the bar that you want, okay? But like I say, if you take the two by fours and you run it through a table planer, it gives it a really nice, smooth, finished edge. So it's like you're working with a really nice product, even though they're just standard two by fours, okay? But if you don't have a table planer, it's all good. You can just go ahead and use the two by fours. You can run a little palm sander on them if you want to give them a little, you know, a bit of a finished, you know, clean look. That's fine. But if not, you can just use standard two by fours. So you see there, basically, I took two two by fours and I butted them together, made a bunt joint, and I locked them together to make my corners. And then I did that on my right side and my left side, and then I locked in a horizontal on the bottom and on the top. And then I'm also going to go through and I'm using a countersink and a pilot and I'm drilling through with my countersink and then I'm installing decorated screws. I'm using three inch screws and three and a half inch screws, okay, to do this build. So the three and a half inch screws are if I'm going to go through, you know, three pieces of two by, the three inch screws are just for two pieces of two by. And then now I'm adding my vertical piece. I want to have three vertical pieces for my siding my cedar siding to basically nail to and so that way they don't bow and stuff in the, in the future you know and if you put if you just put the two outside corners and then you run your siding and skip that center piece it's going to be not that solid of a product okay so you have to add that vertical two by four in there so once we have all that we're going to lock everything together and then now we're going to start making our corners see our corners are basically just two pieces these are our return pieces and they're just going to basically attach to a vertical 2x4 and then we're going to slide it in and it's going to attach to that corner piece of 2x4 right there. As you can see in the picture, my angle's off a little bit, but I do slide it back into frame in a minute here because I do need to keep it there to demonstrate this next corner, the next side I'm making here. So I use a square and I'm going to square everything back and remember I'm using 15 gauge nails. And if I didn't mention that, I'll mention them now. I use 15 gauge brad nails and it's, you know, I'm using a finished nail gun, 15 gauge. They're galvanized nails and I'm using two and a half inch nails. So they're going through and they're locking in pretty tight and that's just to hold it together. Now I'm going to screw it all together. And as you can see right there, I'm showing how I'm going to screw it together. And right now I'm demonstrating what a, that's a countersink with the pilot. And then I'm demonstrating um, toe nailing. So toe nailing means I can screw a screw in two pieces of wood basically go down an angle and you toe nail it and you can do that on the top or you can do that on the face of the two by four and this helps make everything locked together really strong and really secure. So once you basically know what toe nailing is and you use a countersink in the pilot you can go through and you can just screw the heck out of this thing. The more screws you put in and if you, you, you know, pilot everything and you countersink it all, all your screws will be all flush and buried into the wood and it won't split the wood. So it's a really good technique to use. Okay, use a countersink with a pilot and then you're going to want a toenail and then just lock everything in, butt edge, you know, square edge and use decorated screws if you're planning on going outside with this bar. Okay, so this bar is going to be you know, basically built to be outside. We're using decorated screws and we're using, you know, exterior rated nails. And then we're also going to clear coat it with an exterior product, an interior exterior product. But it will last a lot longer if you keep it indoors. Okay, but you can bring this outdoors. But like I said, it'll last 10 times longer if you leave it inside versus outside. 
Okay, so once we have everything built together, we're gonna use our one and three quarter inch 15 gauge screws to attach our horizontal um, cedar siding onto the bar. Okay, now what I'm using as my cedar siding is just basically what it is, is just some cedar that I bought from your local hardware store. They're cedar fence planks, as a matter of fact, and you can cut off the dog-eared fence plank and then you can basically have a butt edge and you can use it as a horizontal plank. Now it's a rough hewn product, so you can run it through the table planer to give it like a smooth edge, or you can go ahead and just leave it rough hewn. And it, it, if you can want to smooth it out a little bit, you can hit it with a palm nailer and it does sand down really fast and really easy. So also I'm putting in a lot of nails. As you can see, um, I'm using galvanized 15 gauge, one and three quarter inch, brad nails okay and i put a lot in the corners and i'm going to hide all those corners with my um corner trim pieces that i'm going to be installing here in a little bit stay tuned you'll see how i do that and that's going to hide basically all the little holes so when you do nail all the planks together be mindful of that and i'm also spacing it about a 16th inch gap in between each in between each plank and the reason why you want to do that is for expansion okay because sometimes these planks when they start to acclimate they will expand and contract and things like that so you want to have a little bit of a gap breathing room between each plank so i'm using just some 16 gauge nails as my spacers okay for each each plank i have about a 16th of an inch gap maybe a little less than an eighth as far as a gap in between each plank and right there you can see it's pretty movable with one person but it may take two people to move it and so now i'm going to be installing a little baseboard on the bottom you know a little detail on the bottom and we're going to be fortifying the corners and mitering them all together and basically is all that is is a piece of dog-eared fence plank that i ran through the table plant uh, through the table um, saw and i cut it down two inch rip and that's what I used as my baseboard and I put my factory edge up and then I put my cut edge down okay and then once that's done we're gonna go ahead and start running our corner pieces and oh and one more thing I did do that's very important you see all these horizontal fence planks when you buy those dog-eared fence planks from your local hardware store the edges are sometimes really not in good shape and so what I do is I run in through my table saw and I rip off about an eighth eighth inch off each side of the dog eared fence plank all along the the linear side of it so that way it gives it a really nice nice square edge and that way you don't have a bunch of w weird inconsistent um you know edges that don't really don't really line up and everything's not uniform and some of them are even like splitting and stuff like that so if you run that through the table saw on each edge it gives your edges really nice and then you have a really nice cedar plank to work with and also too it if you want to just keep it raw and keep it as an interior you know bar it's really cool to do that as well but i'm going to go ahead and clear coat everything the interior and the exterior the bottom basically the whole thing i'm going to clear coat stay tuned you'll see how we do that here in a little while now we're going to be installing our bar top so this bar top we're using two by four and two by twelve okay as our bar top and this is all leftover material from one of my framing jobs you know just got done doing an addition on a house and we had a lot of leftover materials that were still in really good shape and then we ran them through our table planer as well we ran that 2 by 12 through the table planer and like i say if you don't have a tube you know table planer you can skip that section um, and just have regular 2 by 12 and you can biscuit joint you know all these sections of bar top together to make it all one solid piece if you really want to but i don't mind the separation it gives a little bit of a detail having little gaps in between and the live edge and i feel like it just gives a little more character and then if you ever have to replace a section of the bar you don't have to replace the whole bar top so basically what we did is we took a 2 by 12 we used counter you know our pilot with our countersink and we screwed down and then we installed three and a half inch decorated screws all the way down and then they countersink past the top of the deck the bar you know top and they go down about a quarter inch in and then so a little later we're going to be using some wood dowels and we're going to be installing those into all our screw holes to hide the screws so now i'm installing the other little two by 12 for one of my returns and then i'm going to install a two by four at the end as well and then 
what I'm doing is I'm countersinking and I'm toenailing, like I demonstrated earlier, I'm toenailing the sides of the 2x12 and the 2x4s into each other. So it's basically like biscuit joining it together. And if you toenail the corners together, and then later you use wood dowels and you dowel everything, it really locks it in really tight and nice. And then we're also countersinking and locking in our screws in from the top as well to all of our 2x4 framing that's below it. You see how I just put one in on the side there? And then also now we're going to put our 2x4, we're going to lock that in, and you can just screw and screw straight from the face of the 2x4 that caps it. Um, now we're hanging over the edge about 6 inches on the sides and the front, and then on the back we're only about an inch hanging over the edge. Now you can change that reveal depending on your own design. And hopefully by watching this video, you'll be able to basically, you know, make your own design or you can copy this one. That's fine. And you see we're countersinking and running our three and a half inch screws all the way through that two by four. And that two by four is three and a half inches, but we countersink about almost an inch in. And then we use um, a Phillips head that has a long shaft on it. So it slides into the hole and the screw goes all the way in and locks in at least an inch into the other two by 12. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start running our shelf. So we took some two by four and we ran it on the right and the left. And we measured down to the size shelf that we want and make sure you figure that size out if you're gonna use it for holding any kind of alcohol bottles or any kind of specialty items down there. Make sure that that shelf is at the height that you want it so it doesn't you know, um, you know, hit the top of the bar or the bottom of the bar if you put like bottles of alcohol or you know some alcohol down there you don't want it to hit the you want it to be able to hold the bar the bottle real nice and not clip the bar top every time you pull a bottle out so once you figure out that height then you're going to put your ledger on the right and left and then we're also ran a two by four in front of it basically as a support that's going to run right along the bottom lip of our shelf because we're using just a cedar fence plank you know as our shelving and it's three quarter inches, but it still needs a little bit of support. So we ran that two by four along the front edge and that's gonna carry the load for the shelf. And then we're also gonna hide that two by four with a piece of cedar sort of on the face of it to cap it and make it just look really nice. But that's a very solid shelf. You can, you can stand on that shelf and it's gonna hold your weight. Then once we do that, we're just finishing off, you know, by trimming it out a little bit, covering that back edge right there on the right and the left side. And by doing that, it's just going to hide all the framing and stuff. But you can skip some of those um, steps if you want. But I really like doing this because it gives it a really clean finished look. And it ties everything together. And it like wraps everything. And it makes it feel really nice and like a solid unit. Okay. And just to throw it out there, if any of you want to buy one of these bars, shoot us an email. And uh, we can build one for you custom. All right. We're in the California, LA area. If you need it shipped out, you'll have to pay for shipping plus the cost of the bar. And uh, yeah, we can go from there. So anyways, what we're doing now is we're sanding it with a 60 grit. So we're taking a 60 grit sandpaper and with a palm nailer and we go through and we're gonna sand everything. And that 60 grit is to shape it. Okay, you wanna go with the grain. And if you wanna knock off any of the corners or round any of the edges, that's what you're gonna wanna use some 60 grit to do that with. Or you can even take a router and run a router along all the edges to give it a cool routered edge, whatever you want. So now, after we did the 60 grit and we got it nice and shaped, we're going to go through, you know, we used an air chuck and we blew out all the dust from all the holes. And now we're going to throw a little glue and then some wood dowels on top of all our screw holes. And then we're going to, you know, cut that out. And then after all those wood dowels and plugs are installed, any screw holes or any areas that need wood putty, any, you know, knots or anything that you want to, you know, clean up a little bit, you can add a little wood putty to it. Then once all that's done and these dowels are all dry and everything's dry, we're going to go through and we're going to sand it with some uh, 120 grit. Then once we sand it with 120 grit, that'll knock it all down. Then we'll go ahead and hit it with like some 180. And then once the one, once we're done with the 180, we're going to go to 220. And then we're going to sand it all with the 220. And you want to sand with the grain. You do not want to go against the grain. So you want to make sure you sand with the grain and try to keep, you know, everything sort of uniform and continuous. So if you start sanding, go from right to left, right to left, right to left. Just continue to sand until everything's as smooth and as nice as you want it. Like I say, the more you put into the sanding and the nicer you make it, the better product it will come out at the end. So 
let me repeat that we started with 60 and we use that to basically you know shape everything that's a 60 grit sandpaper and then after that we hit it with 120 after we do all our dowels and our wood putty then we hit it with 120 which we're going to do right now after the wood putty and then after that we're going to hit it with the 220 or i'm sorry <laughs> let me rewind 120 and then to a 180 and then to a 220 and then once the 220 is done, we're going to wipe it all down with a damp rag and you know, blow all the dust away, wipe it down with a damp rag. And then after that, we're going to condition it with some wood conditioner. Okay, this is a pre-stained conditioner. And I didn't show that in this video. It just didn't record on me. But you can just basically whatever product you're getting, if you're getting like a, a Minwax product or you know, a Valspar, or, you know, Helmsman or some kind of product that you're getting, just make sure you get the wood conditioner that goes with that product. Okay. And the wood conditioner, you want to apply that before you apply the stain, because what it does is it penetrates into the pores and allows all the pores to open up. And then when you apply the stain, the stain will apply evenly and it won't look blotchy and weird in certain areas. Like the wood will basically um, absorb all the stain nice and even and that's what you want to have a really nice uniform finished product so now i'm installing the casters i use three inch with pan head screws and i went through and i like to put all the casters on the inside so you can lock it from the inside of the bar don't put them on the outside edge of the framing on the inside edge of the framing so you see how you can unlock it from the inside and then you can move it around the casters are really cool you can it, it makes them really easy to move this bar around and that's what's really cool about this bar. You can move it around. You can take it from your front yard, your backyard, your garage to your living room, throw it in the pickup truck, take it camping with you if you if you love your bar like that. <laughs> or you can take it to your business. Like if you have a restaurant or if you have a little bar and you want to have a patio bar, you know, um, to double production, then there you go. You can make one of these and have it at your bar and then your main bar can be going and then you can roll one of these out to the patio and you can have a little mini bar you know going off somewhere else okay just run extension cord out to a little cash register and you're you're going so this is now we're basically going to be we're in the fine final stages of our sanding okay we did our 120 and then we did our 180 and then we're going to jump to our 220 and once all that's done, we're going to blow it all and clean it all off. Now, I already did the wood conditioning, which I explained to you earlier. And the wood condition goes on the same way I'm putting on the stain, and it dries in like five minutes. And then you can apply your stain, okay? And the way I'm applying this stain is using I'm using a rag, and I'm using a rag technique, and I'm wiping it on with the grain. And you want to keep your strokes long and even. And you don't want to, like, go across the grain in any way. And if you if you start a board, you want to finish a board. You don't want to stop mid... If you get a phone call and then just stop staining it midway and then you start finish staining it later, you might see that where you stopped and started. So you want to keep your strokes, you know, pretty even from right to left, right to left. And then you can go through with a little brush and you can get all of the corners and inseams that are inside and that are hard to get with the rag. And then you go through later... After you're done with that, and you can get all your excess stain off with one final wipe through with the rag. Now we're going to be putting on our spar urethane. Okay, and we're using an interior exterior product, and we're putting on our first coat, and we're using, um, uh, you know, a, a brush that's perfect for applying stain. This one is a Wooster. I like Purdy typically, but this brush is a nice brush, and you can make sure you get a brush that's to apply stains and clear coats make sure your brushes is, it's not just for painting it's for stains and clear coats and then once you put on your first layer it's this urethane dries in about 30 minutes and that's what i love about this urethane and it's a water-based product so it's really easy to clean and then once it dries then you can go through in about 30 minutes and give it another coat and then once it dries 30 minutes after that you can give it another quick coat and that's what's really awesome because in the span of a few hours you can have it basically finished off so now we put we gave the whole body a coat we gave the top a coat first and then we gave the whole body a coat and then now we're doing the foreigner grit okay what i just showed you with my fingers is i gave three coats on the top now i'm going to go through with my foreigner grit sandpaper after i did three coats of the spar urethane on the top i hit it with my 
foreigner grit sandpaper and you see how it's turning it white and first time you do it it's going to feel like oh my gosh i'm ruining it i don't want to do this trust me once you do this and then you wipe it down and put it another coat on it it's going to be so nice and you're going to love it it's really awesome and this is the same technique you use to stain doors to stain cabinets um furniture you know this is the way to do it so once we get after we wipe you know sand it with the grain Okay, on our with our foreign grit, we're going to use a microfiber cloth and you can get it a tiny bit damp if you want, just a tiny bit. And then you're going to wipe everything off and then you can even use a blow, you know, a blow chuck with the air compressor and give it a nice, you know, blow to get all the dust off. Once you do that, then you, we're going to give it our final coat. And then after that final coat, it should be beautiful. If you feel like after your final coat and you want to do one more final coat, give it a fifth coat, then it'll be that much light, nicer, you know? And if, if you just give it more coats and more coats, the more coats you give it, the nicer and nicer and nicer it's gonna be, okay? And there is another product I wanna mention, it's called Super Glaze. Super Glaze, you can put on there and it equals to 60 coats, just one coat. And it's a two-part like two glaze that you mix. You can get it from your local hardware store. It's called Super Glaze. It's a really fun product. But anyways, I hope you all enjoy this build, um, and I hope I explained it you know, enough for you all to be able to feel confident and go out there and build this. Please leave comments you know, in the comment section if you have any questions on product I used or you know, where I got it from and you know, how we did it or whatever. Let us know. We're here for you. And please share this video if you, if you enjoyed the video. If, you, if you're liking the video and you really felt like it helped you out, you know, help support our channel by sharing this to other people. You see there, boom, catches the bottle cap really nice and easy. And that was a cool little, little demo right there. So that can catch your bottle caps. You can have that little shelf for, you know, alcohol. And then you got your casters on the bottom. They're lockable. So we use two inch casters. That's right, two inch casters. Don't, I can't forget to tell you that. And they're lockable casters. We got them at a local hardware store. So hope you enjoy the video and remember to subscribe and like and leave a comment. Thank you everybody, Kona Pro out.